Hi everyone, it's Katrina. Number 10. Magical Cathedral There is a magical cathedral that looks like it came straight out of a fairy tale in one of the last places you would ever expect. It's called Las Lajas Sanctuary, and it can be found in the southwestern corner of Colombia near the border of Ecuador. It was built hundreds of years ago, but looks like the iconic Disney-style castle we all know today. It's in the jungles of South America, built on the edge of a cliff with a bridge spanning the massive gorge in front of it. It's not just one of the most beautiful places in Colombia, it's one of the most magnificent cathedrals in the whole world. According to legends, it was in 1754 that the Virgin Mary appeared at the site of the sanctuary to visit a mother and her sick daughter. But when the Virgin Mary appeared, a storm came with her. The mother and daughter found shelter in a cave, and there, scorched onto the rock wall, was the image of the Virgin Mary. The young girl was allegedly cured by the image of the Virgin. News began to spread that the cave had healing properties, and a chapel was soon constructed over the site. More and more people visited the location. The church became bigger, grew into a cathedral, and was completed in the Gothic Revival style. The truth is that the fairy tale cathedral is not nearly as old as it looks, and only appears ancient because of the architectural style that mimicked medieval Europe. It was built between 1916 and 1949. You can actually visit this sanctuary and see the image of the Virgin Mary for yourself. In 1952, it was officially recognized by the Catholic Church. Getting there is a little difficult, but once you're there, it's probably worth it. Number 9. Liechtenstein Castle Liechtenstein Castle is the fairy tale battlement and mansion built by Count Wilhelm of Württemberg on the edge of a 2,400 foot cliff. It can be found deep in the Swabian Alps, commanding impressive views of the German countryside. In the 12th century, the lords of Liechtenstein were some of the most powerful people in Europe. They were a noble family and owned a large amount of land. They directly controlled the region's resources. Their ancestral seat of power was a small fort built right over a river, above the castle that currently stands today. But in the medieval days, the peasants from the city of Rutlingen did not like the Liechtensteins who ruled over them. They were extremely hostile and destroyed their castle twice, including once during a civil war in 1311. Following the second annihilation of the castle, the lords of Liechtenstein built a new one, a much bigger one. But instead of using the original foundation, they built an entirely new one 1,500 feet away. The castle was completed in 1390 and became one of the most advanced fortifications of the Middle Ages. It was practically impenetrable and withstood every attack launched at it. But in 1567, the majestic castle fell into disrepair. The family had lost their importance and castles were rapidly falling out of favor. In 1687, the last member of the Liechtenstein family died. The castle was taken over by the Habsburg family, then was torn down and replaced with a hunting lodge. The castle still standing today is a replica built in the 19th century. Number 8. Lake Bled Lake Bled in Slovenia is an incredible place of myth and legend. According to old Slovenian folktales, Lake Bled was created by fairies. It was once a land of great fertility that attracted shepherds from all around Europe. But while shepherds took care of their flocks during the day, fairies played in the fields at night. The fairies eventually grew worried that the sheep would eat all of their grass. And so they asked the shepherds if they could build a fence to keep the sheep away from them. But the shepherds didn't listen. All the grass was eaten, and the land was left barren and dead. The fairies were so upset, they had the whole area flooded by springs and creeks. When they were finished, only a small island in the center of the lake remained, and that was where the fairies continued to dance underneath the moonlight. In the 17th century, the Church of the Assumption was built on the island in the center of the lake. And yes, the church has its own story too. Legend says a widow was so devastated after the death of her husband that she turned all her jewelry into a shimmering bell. Her plan was to install the bell in the chapel on Blood Island to honor her husband. But on her way to the island, the bell sank to the bottom of the lake. 
The Pope heard of her story and had a new bell commissioned, which is still in the church today. Some even say that on an especially still night, you can hear the bell chiming from underneath the lake. Number 7. Mount Athos Mount Athos is truly an incredible place. The mountain is one of the most breathtaking places in Greece. It's covered in thick forests right at the edge of the beautiful Aegean Sea and rich in ancient history. The slopes of Mount Athos are speckled in over a dozen beautiful monasteries and other religious buildings, all with unbelievable views over the coastline. It's a recognized UNESCO World Heritage Site, a place featured prominently in Greek mythology, but it holds a dark secret. Let's start at the beginning. According to the Greek myths, Mount Athos was created when Athos grew angry and threw a rock at Poseidon. When monks began to settle on the mountain slopes in the 5th century, they built monasteries. The first monastery of note was the Great Lavra Monastery, constructed in 963 with support of the Byzantine Emperor. Christian legends state the Virgin Mary had a meeting with John the Evangelist on the side of the mountain. Mary fell in love with the natural beauty of the place. She was supposedly so struck by the beauty that she asked God for Mount Athos to be gifted to her. God said yes, the mountain would be her inheritance. Mount Athos would be her own paradise where all those in need of salvation could be saved. Fast forward 2,000 years and women aren't even allowed there. Even though Mount Athos is technically part of the European Union, women and even female animals have been banned by the monks for 1,000 years. Since the mountain is in Greece, which is part of the EU, there should be strict gender equality laws. But the church gets what it wants, and no woman is allowed within 500 meters of the coastline. It's also off limits to children and eunuchs. And now for number six, but first, I want to give a big shout out to Charity Snow and Chrysandra Skinner. Thanks so much for watching and supporting Origins Explained. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe and join the family. Number 6. Hobbiton Hobbiton is a place in New Zealand that makes you feel like you've just stepped into a fantasy world. Hobbiton is the very real set used by Peter Jackson when he filmed the Lord of the Rings movies. It's the only place in the world where you can step from reality into the world of Middle-earth, specifically the Shire. But let's look at the real history behind the village of the Hobbits. When Jackson was looking for places to make the films, he found Alexander Farm during an aerial search. He thought it would be the perfect location for Bag End, and so the farm was transformed into the home of Bilbo and Frodo Baggins. But when the movie ended, the set never came down. The franchise is so ridiculously popular that the set remained standing and became a tourist attraction. And then when The Hobbit was turned into a trilogy, Hobbiton was renovated and used for filming the new movies. And it's still there today. Number 5. Krakow Krakow looks like a crumbling forgotten mountain town from a dark fairy tale. Its buildings are empty, its homes are vacant, and yet it still stands proudly on the side of a mountain overlooking the hills and valleys below. It was clearly once a magnificent place to live, yet it's been empty since the 1960s. Its history goes back over 1,500 years. Krakow was founded by Greeks who had recently moved inland to Italy in the year 550. There are ancient tombs in the area dating back 1,200 years. At first, Krakow was a small and humble village at the peak of a mountain looking at the sea beyond. But as time went by, the population boomed. When the university was established in Krakow in 1276, there were about 450 residents. By the 16th century, the town had exploded to 2,500 residents. But this was its maximum threshold. The hilltop city could not hold any additional humans. The stress of the expanding city caused more problems than anyone had anticipated. All those moving feet and all the new houses caused the mountain to erode and sparked landslides and earthquakes. The town was devastated by a landslide in 1963 that convinced everyone still remaining to leave. This was after decades of hardship and food shortages because of the unstable soil. All that's left now is the empty shell of a town built in the Dark Ages. 
Number 4. Hurstmanzoo Castle Hurstmanzoo Castle can be found in East Sussex. It's an absolutely perfect example of a fairy tale castle. It's one of the oldest brick buildings in England, made entirely from brick and sitting in the middle of a huge moat. The only way to reach the castle gates is by going over the stone bridge across the water. During the Norman conquest of England in the 11th century, a manor house stood at the site of the castle. After the Normans invaded and took control of England, the lady of the house married one of their noblemen. The manor was made into a castle around 1441. It was extremely impressive when first built, but quickly fell into disrepair like many castles throughout the land. In 1541, the owner of the castle, Sir Thomas Fiennes, upset King Henry VIII. He and his aristocratic friends got together and were going to raid another fellow lord and go hunt on his land. Unfortunately, he got caught, and everything went terribly wrong. For this hunting trip gone awry, Lord Fiennes was hanged for treason. The castle then came into the possession of Thomas Fiennes' descendants, who did not maintain it. It was then sold to a lawyer in 1708, and for an unknown reason, he destroyed the interior and stripped the building of all its furniture. The only thing that remained were the original brick walls. In the 20th century, Hurstman Zoo Castle was renovated. It was turned into the site of the Royal Greenwich Observatory in 1957 and is currently a tourist attraction. Number 3. Panam Nagar Panam Nagar is an abandoned city in Bangladesh. It's an empty and ruined town with its roots going back to medieval Asia. It's definitely different architecture than what you would find in a medieval fairy tale village in Europe, but of course, it all depends on what you're used to. The history of Panam began somewhere in the 13th century. It was likely the Hindu capital of Sonargaon, a prosperous place where the early Muslim governors of the Sultanate of Bengal lived in 1338. It prospered as a merchant city with splendid palaces, winding city streets, and bustling marketplaces where people sold everything from spices to raw cotton. But like many medieval cities of the ancient world, the magic of Panam was buried under modernization and industrialization. It started in 1610 with the construction of highways and bridges. The city became a stinking cesspool of filth and urban life. In the 19th century, it was under colonial rule and was mostly under the control of the British East India Company. The British established factories in the old city for cheap later. Then, after World War II, what little remained of the once magical Panam Nagar was left abandoned. Number 2. The Lost Castle of Gloucester Gloucester Castle was built by the Anglo-Normans during the years after the brutal Norman conquest of England. Historians believe it was the first sheriff of Gloucestershire who commissioned the construction of the castle, a man named Roger de Pietra. Gloucestershire or Gloucestershire? What do you guys think? It consisted of a simple mott and bailey in 1066. That was during the reign of William the Conqueror. 16 houses had to be destroyed just to make room for the castle. Then, a few decades later, it was enlarged by King William II. Legend has it he demolished another eight houses to give his castle more room to breathe. As the years went by and the kings changed, the castle grew bigger and bigger. Henry III was so fond of Gloucester Castle that he used it as his own personal residence. During the Second Baron's War of 1264, it was besieged twice. It was during these years that the castle doubled as the local gaol or jail, an old English term for prison. Eleanor of Brittany, the cousin of King Henry III, was even imprisoned in the castle because she had a more legitimate claim to the throne than the king. But then things took a turn in the 15th century. The castle was used briefly as a fortress by Richard III, then converted entirely into the county jail. Stone was removed from the fairy tale castle to help in the construction of other buildings. The castle was even disassembled in some places to construct local roads. In 1787, the castle was demolished and a new jail was established in 1791. The original foundations of the mythical castle weren't found until December of 2015. Number 1. The Fairy Tale Forest 
there is an amusement park in the Netherlands unlike anywhere else in the world. Most of the attractions inside the fairy tale forest are inspired by storytellers like the Brothers Grimm and Danish author Hans Christian Andersen. It was founded in the early 1950s as a bizarre idea to boost tourism in the area. Over the next 10 years, amateur inventors, filmmakers, and artists put together 10 fairy tales. They use Sleeping Beauty, Snow White and the Six Servants, The Frog Prince, The Chinese Nightingale, and many others. These days, though, the fairy tale forest has over 25 scenes, including a recreation of Little Red Riding Hood and her grandmother's house. There really isn't anywhere else that can bring you into a fairy tale like this place. There are dragons in the park, talking trees, and huge castles. There is even a house made from candy where you can see Hansel trapped behind the bars of the window and desperate to escape. Would you like to visit this place? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you could pick just one, which of these fairy tale places would you love to spend the night? Let me know in the comments and be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. See you next time. Bye.